Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. welcome back. Today's video brings us to the Tangled Shore Obelisk, and I'm sorry about my voice, I've been really sick. These reviews that I'm doing for the Sundial Weapons have a couple goals in mind, and next week I'm going to have a video ranking them all. I put at least 10 to 15 hours into each of them, and for a lot of them I put in way more time than that, but the goal is to try and get the most out of these. There are roles for some of them that are really good for this season, but some of them are good enough to actually stay around. That's the end goal, something to keep in your vault that you're actually going to pull out and you're actually going to use it. In my reviews, I hype things up and kind of nudge you in that direction when they need to be hyped up. And for this AR, I have some select roles that I'm keeping, and those roles are just pure standouts. Otherwise, there's a lot to go through. Today, I want to talk about the Kinetic 720 RPM Rapid Frame Auto Rifle, the Steel Feather Repeater. Out of the gate, I found that this has some saving qualities, but it has some serious issues, mostly for controller. Some weapons have some differences between mouse and keyboard versus controller, and some weapons just have night and day major differences. This is one of those weapons. I have the base stats on the screen. Now, first off, Steel Feather. It's the only randomly rolled Kinetic 720. It's unique for that fact alone. These 720s kind of bridge the gap between an SMG and an auto rifle. It's got a very nice open 1.6x zoom scope, but with Steel Feather, it has a glaring weakness. It's 38 stability stat. The next best stability stat for a randomly rolled 720 comes from the Valkadin, or Valkaden. It has 52 stability. Reckless Oracle from the raid, it has 60 base stability. Misfit is 58 on the stat bar. And Misfit can actually roll with scopes. When you break it down on Steel Feather, you would need to have polygonal rifling on the barrel and ricochet rounds as the magazine, which in both categories are the most you could possibly get for stability. When those are put together, you can match the base stability of Misfit. Just match it. You would then need a stability match to work to get beyond that. That's how low that it is. I found that this is an issue for controller. It also has a nasty recoil direction of 57, and not the good kind of nasty. What you get is an all over the place experience with controller, and there are perks that help this out tremendously so much that in certain areas it's near necessary, but at base this is bad. It doesn't matter if you're in PvE or PvP, and going through arrowhead break, chambered, counterbalance mods, all of it, you can work with them all, but in the end, it's a bullet hose AR with a 38 stability stat. For mouse and keyboard, there's a night and day difference. Not extreme, it feels like a 720 with its kicking, but you can be somewhat precise. It has slight horizontal recoil that goes left and right, and in a first person shooter, horizontal recoil is a bad thing, because you can correct vertical recoil with your recoil compensation. Horizontal though, going left and right, can't be corrected with ease. And with controller, that's felt a lot more. For the barrels, for this one, it holds true. You can get away with full bore with mouse and keyboard, but something like small bore would be more rounded since it does have that 38 stability stat. Now for controller, you went chambered, polygonal, small bore, but even when you get those, it still doesn't feel good in your hands. For the magazine, there are some damage dealing perks, so if you want, an actual magazine option works well here, and if you're looking strictly for PvP, ricochet rounds is the top option. And low key for some of the damage dealing perks, armor piercing rounds to over penetrate targets, and this mag doesn't get that much love, but it's really good. In the first perk node, we have Feeding Frenzy. I love this perk, it's top tier for it. Any kill grants a fast reload, excellent with damage dealing perks obviously, but it's just simply nice to have, period. We have Firmly Planted. This is only on three auto rifles in the game. The old school medley, the new updated Uriel's Gift, and I went over that when there's a link in the description and at the top of the video there's a card, and then we have Steel Feather Repeater. And Steel Feather is the only 720 in the game that has it. Increased stability, accuracy, and handling when firing while crouched. Ever since taking me in Destiny 1 to this perk now, I will always call this a top pick. It's the combination of the stability that it gives, and most of all, correcting pretty much all recoil direction. With a controller, top tier elite, S tier. With M and K, it's a laser. When you knee slide firmly planned, it works. It pretty much bypasses any recoil direction stat and makes it fairly vertical, almost straight up and down. We have Subsistence, great perk for it, and I will cover why in a moment. Kills partially reload the magazine from reserves, but your total reserve ammo capacity is reduced. Each kill gives you back 9 rounds to the magazine from reserves. Grave Robber, mailing an enemy refills from reserves completely, bypassing a reload. It's very good when you pair it with certain perks. We have Ambitious Assassin, overflows the magazine based on the number of kills before reloading. Good for damage dealing perks, and it can get you over 60 rounds. Then Slideways. Sliding partially reloads this weapon's magazine from reserves and temporarily boosts handling and stability. You would be using this perk strictly for reloading the magazine. Each time you slide, a 3 second timer comes on the screen, it starts at 2, double zero counts. Immediately, it throws in 8 rounds. Kind of similar to what Subsistence gives after a kill. Generally, the stability that Slideways gives is a really good thing, but I've noticed that when this buff is gone, it hurts you way more than it helps. Because it feels good for a moment, but once that regular 38 stability kicks in, even if you add to it to 48 or 50 stability, it's going to be all over the place. Like I said, I've found that it actually ends up hurting you more than it helps you. 
And in this perk node, especially since Firmly Planted is there, I would only use this for its reloading capability. In the final node, we have Swashbuckler, stack so times 5 At a times 5 stack, you deal 33% more damage, or the same as Rampage times 3 And going further, the same as Multi-Kill Clip times 2 You can melee an enemy and immediately jump to a times 5 stack and then chain it, always keeping it at a times 5 Always a solid perk. We have Vorpal Weapon, increased damage against bosses, vehicles, guardians, and their super. This works on bosses and majors. Vorpal grants 15% more damage than base, and then you can stack on a major spec or a boss spec for a tad bit more damage. I've used Vorpal on this, and even though it shoots fast, it's a bullet hose, Breach Light blows it out of the water. It's clearly superior. As far as this new perk Vorpal Weapon that's been introduced, Breach Light has that close to mid-range. Patron of Lost Causes, the Scout, has medium to long, and then Trophy Hunter has that super long range. And in PvP, with Vorpal on Steel Feather, it's not too good. Again, Breach Light, Patron, other weapons do it so much better. In Steel Feather's case, Vorpal Weapon is kind of a bad archetype to have this perk. Multi-Kill Clip, reloading grants increased damage based on the number of kills made beforehand. Always a great perk, the magazine is large enough that you can get three easily in certain scenarios. And I always bring up with MKC, it chains off of itself back to a times one, there's no cooldown. And with its damage profile, this is something that you do want to do. So you would get a kill, reload to a times one, have that damage, and use the times one stack to get three kills, that way you can reload to get the times three big stack. At a times three, you're getting 50% more damage than base. Elemental Capacitor, it's a good perk in the right situation, and I found doesn't work so well for Steel Feather. You get boosted stats based on your subclass. If you're on Solar, you get increased reload speed, Arc is handling, and Void grants stability. Archetype-wise, the only thing really worthwhile is stability. And even though stability is the weakest link, other perks in this node fare way better for it. Surrounded, you get 30% more damage than base when three or more enemies are near. It's an excellent PvE perk, and in a rare bind, it can work in the Crucible. And a quick fun fact, there are only five total kinetic weapons in the game that can roll with Surrounded. This, the old-fashioned Hawthorne Shotgun, the threat-level shotgun, and then Exit Strategy, but basically only two primary weapons. You could throw in Exit Strategy, but it's mostly Steel Feather and Old Fashioned, so it's an exclusive club for a kinetic always getting 30% more damage when surrounded by enemies. Near the same as a Rampage times 3, a Swashbuckler times 5, and a Multi-Kill Club times 2. Finally, Osmosis, we've talked about it, can work for match game. When you throw your grenade, the weapon's damage type is now the same as your subclass until you stow it. And I saw Cammy the other day use ricochet rounds on a Steel Feather, bouncing arc projectiles back at himself to proc Risk Runner. Very clever, and that can work in PvE and PvP. Other than that, we always bring up the Nezrax Sin Warlock for Void. But the Reckless Oracle, another 720 in the Energy category, is a way better pick. It has better stats, it's already Void, it has Demolitionist, it can have Kill Clip, different things. So moving on to the perk combos, and before I talk about the main ones to go out and get, there are a couple that have some use, they're fun, and it's going to be up to you if they're going to be worth it or not. Number one is going to be Grey Robber Swashbuckler. A magazine can be something for rounds to extend the mag or something like Armor Piercing. As long as these perks can be combined, it's always going to be a god roll. The idea of meleeing an enemy, refreshing the mag, getting Swash times 5 instantly for damage is great. The second roll to look out for is going to be Swashbuckler and Subsistence. I was really excited about this one. The idea is to keep a times 5 Swashbuckler stack going, getting kills, and each kill throws rounds back into the magazine. It's kind of like a makeshift, great value, legendary version of Huckleberry. It really is, and it's really fun to use. For basic, general play, it's fun. It mows through your targets. I have found, though, the slightest more challenging activity that you get into, it doesn't perform that well. It does okay, but it's kind of a shame. It does decent in Sundial, but nowhere near its max potential. It takes more shots to get down higher tier red bars, and it starts losing the appeal, but that doesn't mean you can't do well with it. And the third role to look out for, if you want to, is Feeding Frenzy with Surrounded. Forget about reloading, forget about meleeing. Again, you're roughly getting around a Rampage times 3 or a Swashbuckler times 5 damage boost. You then have the Surrounded spec, so it's going to be up to you for your specific PvE needs. It does work well. And again, very rare for a Kinetic to have Surrounded that you have some range with. But now to the main PvE role. That's going to be Feeding Frenzy with Multi-Kill Clip. If you're going to grind this out, this is the most bang for your buck. This roll does have longevity for past this season. Not only can it do well now, if any buffs in the future happen, it's going to be even better. And if you're lucky like me here, I have Multi-Kill Clip and Swashbuckler. The middle tree, I have a mag perk to extend the mag. I do think of these as that bridge between an AR and an SMG. So for controller players, it's going to be more accurate for you than an SMG at mid-range. The main thing is to keep your stack up. It does fairly well. 
But a side note, I personally believe that Breach Light does everything better. The multi-kill clip roll, the Vorpal roll, the demolitionist roll, but that's just me. And later on next week, I'm gonna dive deep into that. Now for the Crucible, these have a 0.83 optimal TTK, nine criticals, two body shots. It's an 11 bullet kill. The body TTK is the best out of all legendary auto rifles at 1.27 seconds with 16 body shots. These fare well. We've talked about it in the past with all the range nerfs to pulse rifles and hand cannons. These have kind of inserted themselves as viable within that mid range. As with the theme of the weapon, the bullet hose, it does have a tough time hitting its optimal TTK with its stability stat. And like I said, even if you start upping it a little bit, it's gonna be less than base of some of the better 720s. So you might run into some issues. There are two ways to look at it for the Crucible. It's a bullet hose at the end of the day. One way to look at it is that you're gonna be going for straight lethality from target to target. If that's the case, that's where Feeding Frenzy and those damage dealing perks come in, so that PvE roll is just as good for the Crucible. You're going to be mostly working with a times one stack for multi-kill clip, but you can get a times 2 Even with helping the recoil direction, it's going to have issues for you, even if you're on M and K. But M and K is just a thousand times better for that stability stat. And the second way to look at it is you're going to be going for accuracy. That starts and ends with Firmly Planted. For over 90% of the PvP gameplay in the background, I'm using Firmly Planted. Even with mouse and keyboard. It allows you to achieve that 0.83 a tad more than you would otherwise, and in the Crucible, it's a true game changer with the accuracy that you're getting. But the downside is you have to be crouched, and I've always said, the whole goal is to get them faster than they get you. If you happen to be crouched, who cares? As long as you're accurate and you get them before they get you, doesn't matter. You're going to be pairing firmly planted with swashbuckler or multi-kill clip. Then you start thinking about the platform that you're on. Mouse and keyboard can do well with the Feeding Frenzy multi-kill clip roll. Controller? I would kind of push you towards the firmly planted version. It's one of those things you have to try it for yourself to see which one you would like more. PvP wise, aside from firmly planted, other 720s do it better in my opinion. They are energy though, so that would be the drawback. If you plan to main a 720 RPM AR in the Crucible, something like this Falcaden with Outlaw Kill Clip will outperform it on a pure engagement to engagement basis. It already has way better stability. It has actual kill clip and not multi kill clip. And then something like Reckless Oracle from the Raid can roll with Outlaw Demolitionist, Outlaw Kill Clip. It has 22 more base stability. You would really need to use it and see if you can work with it. Sometimes players like how the recoil direction works for a certain weapon, but I have found that this one gets away from me too much in the Crucible. In conclusion, the outlier is Feeding Frenzy Multi-Kill Clip. It has longevity in your vault with this roll. PvP wise, I recommend you do try a firmly planted roll if one lands in your inventory. Pretty special for a 720 AR to have this and you can do things with that perk that you couldn't do otherwise. I feel it's a decent weapon. I personally don't crown it anything beyond it's just a fun AR to throw in my rotation. I don't think it's game breaking. I don't think it's game altering, but that's just my honest assessment of it. You on the other hand could have a completely different opinion, so let's talk about it down below in the comment section. Is it a go-to for your current PvE activities? Did it miss the mark? Do you plan on using it after Season of Dawn? Again, next week is gonna be a full roundup of all these Sundial weapons my personal list of them ranked, and the ones that I am 100% going to be using after this season. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.